This week, where is my vote? AEC admits faults at the Senate vote count. Fremantle's plastic bag ban has been overturned by the state. Perth's hottest October day on record as Mercury peaked 37.2 degrees. Meanwhile, Canada became a winter wonderland as the temperature dropped below zero. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lowe and Danielle Staniscott. Good evening. The Australian Electoral Commission has announced the controversial recount results for the WA Senate. Wayne Dropledge from the Australian Sports Party and incumbent Green Senator Scott Ludlam were declared winners, while Labor's Louis Pratt and Power United Party's Zhang Ye Wang have missed out. The AEC has confirmed that 1,375 votes were lost during the WA Senate vote count. In a media statement, the AEC said a serious administrative issue came to light and will further investigate the issue. Meanwhile, Clive Palmer and Labor have protested against the results. The state government's tough new law against organised crime comes into effect this weekend. The Attorney General Michael Mischin said the legislation aims to break up criminal organisations. During a press conference on Tuesday at the police headquarters, Attorney General Michael Misjohn said the bill will give police the power to dismantle bikie gangs. I think the balance between being a robust piece of legislation that will attack crime but also one that uh, will address concerns of civil libertarians and preserve the, uh, the interests of individuals. The new law will prevent members from associating with each other if the groups were declared criminal organisations. Members who associate with each other will face the possibility of imprisonment, banned from going to certain locations and impaired with transferring funds to the organisations. WA Police Deputy Commissioner Chris Dawson said the department will work closely with the state solicitor's office and engage legal assistance internally. It's not the sort of power that police can simply lay before the court on a pure uh, criminal conviction of one or more individuals. We've got to have sufficient evidence in the application to make sure that there's confidence that the application will succeed in the court process. Martin Wilson, WAMN News. City of Fremantle's plastic bag ban legislation has been overturned by the state. In this week's feature interview, I caught up with the Fremantle Mayor, Dr Brad Pettit, to discuss the issue. Brad Pettit, thanks for joining us. It's good to be with you. Are you disappointed that the legislation has been scrapped by the state government? We are disappointed because we thought it was a really great initiative that Fremantle had come up with. That could have been a trial for getting rid of single-use plastic bags across the whole state. Um, unfortunately, it was uh, thrown out on a technicality around, around the 10 cent charge, but that does leave open the door for us to reintroduce that legislation at a later date. Do you think this will deter other city councils trying to do the same thing as you? I think it will, although we will, re we will try again to do the local law um, and I think once we get it through we'll be able to see others follow. What I really hope happens is that the state government actually does this themselves. Just this week as they knocked out our local law the whole state of Tasmania went plastic bag free. So it's, and it's, it's already in South Australia in the Northern Territory in the ACT so I think it's only a matter of time before WA goes down this path uh, but, uh, but I would like them to let Fremantle run its trial first. What is the next option for you and your council? Uh, we will change well, based on the feedback from the Parliament, we'll make some minor changes around getting rid of the, the mandatory 10 cent charge and some other tweaks and then we'll reintroduce it and then hopefully the law will come into place probably um, later next year in 2014. Um, will you talk to the state government before you actually put forward this legislation? Um, I have certainly will be speaking to the members of the Legislative Council and those on the delegated, on the committee that does actually deal with delegated legislation and making sure that they are comfortable with the technicality of it even if they don't agree with the principle of it. Is it reasonable for the state government to scrap your plans? Uh, look, it's certainly within their, within their scope of power to do so. Um, I think it's the wrong decision, um, but certainly they're able to make that decision, so we have to live with that. Do you think they're forcing that on you? Uh, well, they certainly uh, are, are certainly overriding the council and forcing it on us, but um, we will keep trying and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get something up. Summer is approaching fast with Perth's temperatures soaring up to 37.2 degrees this week, the hottest on record in October since 1967. Our journalist Joseph Barker went out to discover how West Australians keep themselves cool. With the mercury steadily rising early in spring, Perth could be bracing itself for one of the hottest summers on record. We've already seen evidence of this with the bushfires in New South Wales. It was 37.2 degrees on the 29th of October and it caught people off guard. We spoke to the people of Perth to gauge their opinion on how they'll prepare for the summer 2013-14. 
being the hot weather you could get scan cancer spots so you've got to make sure you always cover up those areas with the water at the beach i think uh, the only threat that's been there's been sharks lately drinking water lots of water hang out with some friends try and get a tan it's, it's australia like you just get used to it every summer it comes and goes obviously what the sun's rays are going to come into contact with first is your skin so now it's more important than ever that if you're going to spend a significant period of time outside wear spf 30 sunscreen to decrease your risk of getting skin cancer in our sunburnt nation joseph barker WAMN News. To news in Asia, it has been two weeks since the Hong Kong government announced that they rejected Ricky Wong's HKTV from entering the business of free television. However, the government has been refusing to answer the public until this point. The members and staff of HKTV organized two TV watching sessions outside the central government office. 10,000 people attended the two different sessions to show their support towards HKTV. There were also protests every single night since the 20th of October outside the CGO with around 10 to 20,000 protesters attending each night. Staff members from HKTV also camped outside the CGO to show their anger and disagreement towards the government action. Other lawmakers, including both Liberals and the pro-establishments, also demanded a reason for not licensing HKTV. Ricky Wong, the chairperson of HKTV, claimed that the government will have to face immense political consequences if the matter is not handled correctly. Timothy Xiao, WAMN News. To world news, Canada has its first taste of winter this year, with temperatures dropping more than 30 degrees. As Canadian correspondent Dustin Lowe reports, the city of Calgary has turned into a winter wonderland. Let's go to Canada and step back to winter again. In Alberta, Canada, first snowfall of the winter season had been recorded on previous Sunday. Temperatures dropped to 30 to 40 degrees Celsius within two days to 10 to 15 degrees below zero in central and southern regions of the province, including the largest city, Calgary. Signage in an uncovered park was frozen, while icicles were formed beneath the handrails. As the weather forecast shows, the minimum day temperature will remain below zero degrees in the next two weeks for the region. Dustin Lowe, WMN News. That's very cold, wasn't it? It was really cold, Danny. Oh mm. my goodness me. That's how the world looks tonight. Don't forget to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Good night.